Hi, and welcome to an amazing, great class we're going to do for you today. We are super excited, and I'll tell you who's here with me and what we're doing. But thank you for your time and your interest. What we're going to cover today is questions and answers about Airbnbs with Sherry St. Marie. And I'm also here with my business partner, one of my best friends, and we do a lot of other projects together. This is Faith Dye. Hello, my friend. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> I'm so excited about this. So we've been working on this all summer. You didn't know that, but we have been uh, doing an amazing job back and forth between two states and all of this stuff. So I'm going to tell you first who I am. She'll tell you who she is. And then today, this live is going to be different. We're just doing questions and I'm answering them. That's it. So very different than my normal style. But here we go. So I do a lot of different things, but for this live and for this course, I'm going to focus on my real estate life. Okay. So I am Sherry St. Marie. If you don't know me, I have been a real estate broker for 18 years. I am actually now duly licensed in the state of Wisconsin and the state of Florida. I also am with a brokerage EXP Realty, which is global. So what that means is I can also help you get referred to one of my teammates in any state in the United States and also lots of international countries. We'll tell you later, like, do I have to be a realtor to be an Airbnb and all that stuff? But I tell you that just to so understand where my background comes from. I've been on camera since I was five. Faith has been on the front and the back of camera. That's why this is fun. And I'm a master's level teacher who used to teach high school marketing. So we've created this thing for you just a little bit differently in a fun, casual way, but you'd be ready easy to get going if you have interest. Faith, do you want to tell them a little bit about yourself? Well, I'm Sherry's friend. And, <laughs> <laughs> Yay! and I've been friends with Sherry for, what has it been, like two years, three years? I think we're Are you kidding me, years. girlfriend? We are on seven years now. <laughs> And um, I just happened to do video production and that's, and you and I met because you were an onstage speaker at an event in Milwaukee and that's how we met. And I knew that you're a firecracker and you're <laughs> such a great speaker and you just had such great energy. I was there, I was there doing video for that event and interviewing different speakers and whatnot. And so we just became friends ever since then. And um, so what I do is most people know me as helping with video production, whether it's filming on site or editing remotely or whatever a video um, project needs. But a lot of people don't know that I'm super passionate about online courses. And I think it's an amazing thing uh, for people to introduce to people. And it's amazing for us as the learners, because there are so many great things that we can teach each other. And so when I'm watching you over these past couple of years, be an Airbnb host, you know, we'll talk about that, but you're you're just so good at that and you're very successful at it. And it's just wonderful that you're available to teach other people and put it in a course format. And so I don't necessarily always do all the video for those courses, but I do help with the formatting of those courses and helping to get it out to um, to the learners. And so that's what you and I partnered on. And a lot of people don't know that we've been doing yes. that. And so it's, I love it. I love it. You know, I did a little mini um, video course, um, earlier this year mm -hmm. and I loved that process and I loved the feedback I got from it. I loved the experience of doing it. I loved that I was able to help people with small video um, tips. And then I just want to, I just want to share that with everybody else. So, so I think and I that's always together. our commonality is that you and I love to help other people, no matter what industry or subject we're in. So our commonality is how cool if we could teach people how to do something that they might enjoy that might be an income stream and maybe they don't even need it. So like, we'll get into it later of like, why do the wealthy still do this? Right. Cause they don't need the money. <clears throat> it's not always about the money. Right. And so it will be exciting and we're just going to question and answer. Right. Yeah. 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 So do you want to start by telling, you know, most people know you as the real estate person. They don't yeah. necessarily know your Airbnb story, how you got into it and how you kind of, I don't want to say the word stumbled, but, how you were introduced to it. I was pushed. Let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I was very pushed by my son, actually. Um, and everybody, he knows I say it. It's the truth. My daughters know. So I have three children and um, they, I have a girl, boy, girl who are now in their twenties and finishing up college and still going to college. We'll be at college, I think 13 years total. <laughs> um, but when, um, I had two that were in college and one that was at home the last year. 
and I was starting to go down to Florida, my son said, why wouldn't you consider Airbnb mom? And I was like, oh, no way. There's no way. Like, that is crazy. I'm not going to take the security risk. I don't want people in our house. I'm not. No way. But I was coming down to Florida. So our house was sitting there a lot of times. And how he got my interest really was to say, mom, what if you played a game and you at first mm -hmm. were deciding, do you want to just get the more or the taxes paid? Because that's not so fun, right? I mean, I appreciate the services my taxes give, but it's not the most fun part to pay, right? So he's like, what if you play a game? Well, he knows his mother well enough. That's what trapped me where I was like, oh, I, I, I like games and I want to be good at this. So we started in actually 2019. I want to demonstrate this flexibility quickly and most the answers won't be so long. But it was because it piqued my interest a little bit. It made a little bit of sense of I'm a single mom and I have three kids in college and we have big expenses and the kids all have their own dorms and leases and I'm coming back and forth. And I quickly got to my very first time, I hated it. And I did it in a manner where the person's able to Airbnb while you're in the house. That was not for me. And more of those details are in the course, but I'll just tell you because I'm very authentic in my teaching, right? I absolutely hated it. I thought there's no way, there's no dollar amount that was worth that stress to me. Some people love it, but for me, it wasn't. And then fast forward, what has happened over the last three years for our family is that we have gotten to a place where I incredibly quickly became a super host because that's where all the money is, where all the fun is. You earning that icon is what makes such a difference on your listings. And we have rock and rolled for the last three years on moving into and transitioning. Me going from one night rental to a week, to 30 days, to hosting the PGA Tour, to hosting CrossFit, to having unbelievable different type of guest stay. Um, it makes a very healthy income for our family. It gets me the equity on my home. We're able to use it whenever we want to. And we're doing very well right now. So we're going to share it with the public. That's a huge blessing. That is so amazing. Yeah. That is yeah. so cool. Thank you. And I mean, your Airbnb property is being used right now as yes. we speak. And they're in the there cool part while, is right? at this minute, my daughter's my youngest daughter's first grade teacher is in it. My youngest oh. daughter's 21. So that hmm. long ago, she taught my daughter. And right now her family and the grandparents are in our house while they're building a house in Madison. So that's cool. That's amazing. Yeah. I have a question. So we have a whole bunch of questions that have come yeah. in. Okay. Um, awesome. So it's a kind of like Sherry St. Marie and 20 questions. Cause there's literally 20 questions in front of me. Right okay. Now. Awesome. Let's go. <laughs> that's good. And they're kind of in different order. So I'm no hoping, problem. I'm sorry if I like jump around and doesn't in matter different, different things, but um, so oh, obviously homeowners are hosting on Airbnb. Um, and you talked about the great income potential there is, but um, yeah. renters. So I have a friend who's renting Yes. And she said, well, I, that's out. I'm out. I can't do that if I'm a renter. So, but renters can do it. Why are homeowners doing it? And why are renters doing it? So or can they can do it, right? Yeah. So homeowners are doing it for a variety of reasons. That's the cool part that I want to demonstrate. So some homeowners are doing it again, like just for that bit of extra tax, we're traveling a little bit, or we have places we're going. So we'll take the money on that rather than sit. Some people are doing it because even if they have the means it's not good for properties to sit empty. Most people don't understand this. We're general homeowners. I get the people who you don't want anybody in your house. Don't do it. I will be the first person to tell you don't do it. If you feel like I have all of our private things there and I don't, then you're not the candidate and that's okay. You know, or maybe you will later, or maybe you'll never want to. But for a lot of people, it is not good for our homes when the pipes aren't running, when the water's not running. That most people don't understand whether you have means or don't means that's not the best way to take care of your house and a home away person, which we have a lot in Florida and some in Wisconsin is not the same thing for someone to walk around once a week and flush the toilet. So a lot of people are catching on to that back to the renter thing. Yes, they can asterisk legally. They can with permission of the owner. So now here, hello, big wake up call. Renters can operate an Airbnb with legal permission from their owner and they do it all over the place. So that's a whole different model where some people don't want to even own anything. They just want to sign a lease and operate the Airbnb. And then they live in their place, wherever that is, renting or owning. So it is possible. Um, and it didn't used to be. So it's cool. That's great. Amazing opportunity. Oh, yeah. my gosh. 
Okay, so you say it's super flexible lifestyle, mm -hmm. super flexible for your lifestyle, goals, your dreams. And so you're focusing on, you call it the micro, the beginner. I call it the micro. I'm yeah. always a micro. I'm a tiny. Because yeah. <laughs> you're a tiny person. You're I'm tiny. a tiny person. I'm a tiny <laughs> micro. I'm a tiny um, entrepreneur, yes. <laughs> but you're not a tiny entrepreneur. Don't, yeah. you're not. Um, okay. You're just modest. Um, <laughs> tell, talk about, you say the word micro as opposed to, you know, saying, oh, you're going to grow a ton and you're going to make a ton of money. You want to focus on something that feels more comfortable is that why yes. you you choose the the micro verbiage well, for me this is it when you look on the internet and you look at you know what's airbnb or how would i learn or whatever and honestly guys we're talking about short-term rental airbnb is a brand right so we're really talking about short-term rental and what i happen to be doing and wanting to teach people is specifically the brand airbnb because that's what i know because that's what i've been successful at you know but why I chose micros because I am one, you know, I don't want to own a hundred things. What I watched over the years is on the internet, everybody's teaching you how to get to 100, how to, I don't ever want to do that. I'm not interested in that. I would like one or two, maybe I'll get crazy and go to five. I don't know, but I probably am at one or two. I, so therefore it's my genre. It's my way of being right of, I'm not trying to get to a ton and the other thing is, you know, I used to be a teacher. I'm very big in society in all different industries. And I'm hearing people say, the old comment would be mom and pops, right? I see mom and pops going, ah, you know, maybe we want to think about doing this a little bit. And we want to keep our home for when we're around the kids, but we want to go somewhere else. Or what I hear a lot is I want to eventually be in Florida or somewhere, right? And so we have a lot of people who are going, I'm going to get mine going now. And I'm going to partly flex with doing Airbnb rental to us coming to when we retire, we've got our whole place, but we bought it now, not in 10 years. Mm -hmm. There's all these different versions of, but my main interest was, and you were so great as you and I talked through this whole thing, right? It is perfect to go, who's the person who really doesn't know what this is or how would I begin they feel like excited, they see the opportunity, but they want someone to hold their hand, like casual, fun, nice, but informative, and show me how to do this and show me how to do it really well so that I have a good rating, good income, and I'm great to my neighbors and all those other things that we'll talk about. Yeah, that was me. That was me literally, because I've never really paid attention to the Airbnb world so much, like as a guest, yep. whenever we would travel, you know, traditionally it would just be hotels. Right. And then we yep. stopped traveling, my husband and I. And so I never really got into the Airbnb thing. Like it was always there. I'm like, yeah, that sounds cool. You know, but I never checked out listings, let alone even thought about becoming a host. Right. So when you were making, when you made your videos and I was going through them to add them to the course, I was learning with every single module. I learned from the beginning everything that I did not know because I didn't Google it. I didn't look it up. I didn't research. It, it was so nice to listen to your modules. They were super short. They were super like, you know, they say snackable. They were these snackable, they were little, snackable you know, Netflix, five right? minute videos. Yeah. They were great because every video was like, oh, oh, okay. Like I didn't know that renters could be Airbnb hosts. Like I didn't know that. I never cared to pay attention. And then, oh, that's really interesting because the friend of mine is considering that and she really wants to know about that. Um, so- well, And it's a lot of how we built this, right? We knew this was perfect between you and me on let me let me like create the course and the content and stuff and then you tell me because you were in the novice category at the time how am i doing is it could somebody really learn could we deliver what we're saying we're giving in this course and so it was perfect well what i really liked was that you made it so easy to number one pay attention to because you're not boring <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're, you're great, fun, easy. It was a very chill, easy, <laughs> casual way to learn. But I learned like with each one, like what yeah. action step to take. That yeah. was the thing. Like what are the, what, what's the overall um, situation? Yeah. What are the legalities? What yes. are the, the steps that you take? What do you think about? I have my pen connected to my finger. <laughs> um, awesome. But just like little things, not little things, yeah. but like all the steps that I didn't even think to ask about um, was so easy to learn from you. And so... Thank you. So that's what we're going to cover with a couple of these. So, okay, here's another question that came okay. in. Um, host versus super host. Why do you like the super host status? What it is about? What is it about super yep. host that's important? So you can't be a super host right off the bat. You have to earn it. So that's your first note. Write that down. You have to earn super host. You can't just sign up to be one. You have to earn it. Just like 
you know, cookies or a golden stars, right? So you, so a host is how you begin. So you can go on Airbnb and begin hosting as long as you legally are permitted. And we'll talk about that if you need a permit in your community. So a host is the first level. A super host is after you've proven that you can get five pinal ratings from your guests. Your guests are who rate you. You don't get to say, you don't get to pay them for a rating. None of that. You have to like show you're good at your business, right? And I know all kinds of tricks and things, and I don't mean tricks in a bad way, that we taught in the course of how do I get there? How do I get there fast? Because it's worth so much money. Here's the deal, particularly if you're not used to Airbnb, that icon of Superhost, which is a logo, a brand, when your guests see that on the internet, they'll book you without even looking at the listing. So I get it just by them seeing that thing by my face. And they don't often even look further because what it tells them in social proof is enough guests say she's good at what she's providing, what she's doing, the value of the money she's got on it, and how we felt communicating and, and reacting with her and all of that. So that's instant is credibility, money. right? It's instant credibility, yeah. but the bigger issue, it's instant credibility for your guests, but it's money sign for you. Yeah. So, but you've you, earned you it too. You've, you've earned, earned it. You had to earn it. Yeah. And there, and there are steps you have to go through. Uh -huh. Yep. Yep. Sorry to interrupt you. I'm getting no, no, no. excited. So it's like, it's, it's all good. And so when you, when you get to super host, you basically are in the pre-money jing, right? Like jing jing in a cash register of they just see that logo and like you're in the money because they'll book you all day long. That's why you want to get to that level. Even if you don't want to rent out your house much or if you want to rent it a lot. So even if let's say I was still at home with my children and we had, you know, four times a year, we came down to Florida and I only wanted to rent it four times a year. This was so flexible. I still want to get to super host so that those four weeks I know I'm booked and I'm actually booking far into the future now. So it's, it's right. very worth it to yeah. work your way to super host, whether you're going to do little or a lot in hosting. Yeah. Yeah. You, um, you've had you, you earned such a great track record and it, th that super host is that represents that that super host icon yeah. represents that you've earned that track record you've yeah. earned that trust you've okay. earned that that level of service and now yeah the pga tour and the crossfit um organizer or two years in a row out of three yeah. so far and i didn't they're, have them the first year so repeat business is yeah. huge so i take advance, like a year in advance now they're yeah they're booking a year in advance and i take really good care of my guests and uh my neighbors we take good care we'll talk about that so it's like that's the stuff yeah. of why i wanted to do the course for everybody else because really for the cost of it for you to be in business that simply is amazing right, right? yeah it's a it's so. a wonderful business opportunity for someone who may not have considered going into business with anything yeah. And it's super simple. Um, it's so like accessible. one of the simplest ways. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, okay. So you mentioned the neighbors. So I've heard yep. that the neighbors, that neighbors may not um, like short term rentals around them. What is uh what is the situation? Yeah. So, yep. And even outside of me operating, I've always paid attention, right? To society changes, what's happening in neighborhoods. So legally and technically as a real estate agent, I can tell you, we never foresaw that residential neighborhoods would become short-term rentals, which somebody could argue is like a hotel in your community, right? So most people go, well, forget that. I bought this place. I built this place. I wanted a quiet neighborhood. I want, uh, right? However, society has evolved and they've become legal whether you like it or not, not in all neighborhoods. So some it is, some have no regulations. So some communities have no license or legal permit required. Therefore, you can Airbnb every day of the week if you want to. Think about the money on that if you want to. Others, you cannot, where they'll straight up tell you your city or your municipality does not um, allow it here. Then you will have some that the city might let you or your town, but your community, your neighborhood, if you're in an association, may say, uh-uh. So you do need to, that's a very, here's a tip outside the course I'll give you. You do need to check. That's the very first thing you do is check. Do you need a permit for your municipality? And do you need two? So I have to have one from the city. I have to have one from the health department in my particular one. And it has evolved over time. So it can change where you didn't need one. Now you do. So it is a risk, right? Of you need to understand that, but you can also get out of it really fast by, 
<clears throat> pushing a button. So I can, <clears throat> excuse me, I can close next week. Done. Don't want to do it anymore. Right. Um, so you do need, you may need permits depending on where you are. You absolutely but, may. But you, so that's important. Sorry, go ahead. No, that is really important. So yeah. most people don't tell you that when they're selling these courses of, oh yeah, go ahead, all this money. Not if it's not legal because you can get fines that are unbelievable if you're operating without a permit if one's needed. So that's right. important. Yeah. Um, okay, more questions. Could someone take this course and easily be able to just do the steps and just do it? Could they do this after... Yep. Um, just going so if, let's I'll do two things. I'm going to tell you one, if you didn't have a requirement of a permit in your municipality, you could do this course. And within two hours, you could be up and running. You could probably do it faster. Like, so, cause really some of the videos as faith knows are two minutes, five minutes, seven minutes. Cause I'm teaching you just one specific thing. You probably honestly could be up within an hour. Um, if you want to do it really well, which I suggest that you use professional photos, professional videos, maybe it would take you a couple days, but absolutely. And Faith, you're the best one, honestly, to say, could somebody really just watch this and be up and running? Because you you, you consume the information in the course mm -hmm. in a position yeah. of not knowing about it. And so what do right. you say? Yeah, I, it gave me the tools to be able to just, just to go and do it. Yeah, because I was just following what you said to do. This is what she did. This is what she did. This is what she's doing. You know, one, two, three. So yes, yeah. Um, okay. So another question. So you said photos and videos, but about details to providing a great stay. So super here's host quality. Yeah. I'm always talking super host, right? I only want to be the best. Sorry. That's just how it goes. Um, so everything I'm talking about is super host. So most people where they miss up or they don't tell you on the internet or all these things where you do a phenomenal job. And again, what you're working for is trying to get a 5.0 rating every time. That's the trick. So the trick is in the details, and that's what everybody doesn't tell you. So this is what I mean by details. One, from the day I started, even pre-COVID, I was as clean as possible. Nobody wants to come into a hotel, right, and see hair in the bathtub or fingerprints on the fridge or whatever. So I, in detail, am very clean and organized about how they come into the space. Some of it is details in learning, which I share all this in the course. What's the very first thing they want to do once they enter the front door? They want the Wi-Fi. That's the very first thing. It's not where are the beds. It's not the what. The very first thing they want to do, people, is hook up to your Wi-Fi. And so I do things like I have a little placard right inside at every TV that just says the Wi-Fi, the password, and it just stays there. It's the very first thing they want. You know, so it's details like that. It is also as you have each reservation learning from them because they're going to rate you. They can also send you a private message. And every time I want to improve, right, where I go, oh, OK, well, this could maybe be easier. Um, and so I want to make sure when they come to this is how I look at Airbnb. And people kind of laugh at me, but it's become fun for me and my family. I am like a modern bread and breakfast, except I don't cook for you. <laughs> And so I think about it like that. I think about it in all the movies I've watched. I think about it in like all the things I know in. I want you to come to our home and just feel really great when you get there and have everything you need. And when we first started, it was incredibly simple. So you really only have to have eight amenities to get started. A towel for each person, a soap for each person. Like it's that simple. We have now gone, as you know, Faith, into even inside the course, I will give you um, a kit where I even show you every little product with the brand name and whatever that I use because my daughter, my youngest and I have worked this Airbnb the most together. She actually runs it when I'm not home now. Um, and we have a whole system. And so, you know, you can just look at little detail -y things of like, we know which soaps work better, which don't, um, all of those kind of things. But for your guest, here's the big thing. This is not the travel industry you're in. Your guest might be coming because of the travel industry, but you are in the hospitality business. This isn't real estate. You are in hospitality and what they are buying from you is an experience. That's the biggest concept piece the public needs to understand if they want to do this. Okay. So let's go back a little bit for a second. Okay. Yep. 
um, you've had, you have all that, you're thinking about providing all of that, that wonderful experience, all yep. the details, the wonderful touches. Now go back now, if, if I'm someone that's thinking about, well, what about um, vetting the people who want to book? You know, there's something called fair yep. housing. Yes, and then course. what about, you know, vetting the people who want to book with you? And then what about security cameras, things like yes. that? Okay. So this is a big question and concern. I totally understand it. I absolutely had it, right? Of like, oh my goodness, who, do, who am I going to let into our home? Now, everything I'm talking about is our first Airbnb was our own house, right? Other people, you might use a rental as your first, then you might not have as much security interest. However, here's the answer. Each host, even right off the bat on your very first time, you get to say the level of vetting or identity check you want. OK, so on mine, even right in the very beginning, I was like, I want these five things checked, right? Two IDs that they have rented before and got a successful rating. So you get to decide. And of course, the stricter you make it, the harder it is to get people right off the bat until you get to Superhost. I'm going to give away some of our strategies in the course now. So I played games about going, I want to be a little strict, right, to make sure I'm safe with these people. But I also need to be a little bit lower in the beginning to get them there and prove I can do a good job, get a good rating, and then I can move them up. Or maybe you leave them strong in the beginning and you um, and you don't change them. I'm super strict now on the house. But back to the ID thing, you do not get their driver's license. You do not get their name. Airbnb does. So they do that to protect for fair housing, just so the public understands. So I'm, a, I'm 18 years as a real estate broker, right? Fair housing is still intact. You don't get to say, I don't want this kind of person. I don't want singles. I don't want this race. I don't want this. You absolutely may not, not do that in Airbnb. We are a very um, fair housing supporter. And your job is to be a host for the human beings coming that you've invited, right? And so we do. you do have to be careful with fair housing. Um, and after the fact, when they become your guest, then you will see what their name is and you will be now you get their phone number we didn't used to so you're not supposed to communicate directly off the app for your own safety and for theirs and i follow that but you do now get their first and last name after the fact after you've booked and also their cell phone number just for emergency purposes or like my municipality i have to turn that in every quarter on a report who stayed at my house what was their contact number um, that's required by my municipality not all so there is Good. that nice level, you know, um, yeah. and then you just decide if something didn't go well, go back and tweak your rules or your identity checks that you want. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's great yeah. to know. Yeah. 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 Because that's my number one thing is just safety on both sides. Totally. I am a huge safety oh. girl. Oh, yeah. So uh, cameras. Yes, cameras. So you are allowed to have cameras on your property. You technically may have them on the outside and actually you can have them inside the home as long as you're disclosing them on your listing up front. So I would disclose to you, I do have cameras on my property and I would tell you in the listing where I have those um, cameras placed. If you have them okay. inside the home, they need not be in anything private. So you're not allowed them in the bathroom or in the bedrooms or whatever. I choose personally not to put them inside the home. I just feel privacy is a huge issue. I would not appreciate it, nor would I feel comfortable if I was staying in an Airbnb. So I operate mine on how would I be comfortable doing it and would I want to, you know? Sure. Yeah. Um, and so I, I do now place the cameras. It's super nice because whether I'm traveling the world or I'm in Florida or I'm back and forth, I can watch my house all the time. Um, yeah. And how I how I say it to my guests is they see it up front and I tell them the main reason and it's the truth that I have those on there is that I want to protect you should any kind of incident happen. Right. If heaven forbid somebody's coming up to my property and they shouldn't be there or whatever. I want my guests protected just like I would if I was at a hotel building right at the front desk. They don't let any Yahoo upstairs to you. Right. Right. And so yeah. mine is just a continuous recording. Should I ever need it? And I am, I personally am not one where I'm sitting there watching. I'm, I'm giving you great privacy on a course. You're going to use the house however you want to while you're there, you know, yeah. but I think it's that level of helping all of us feel comfortable in that we're all trying to do a balanced best thing for both sides. Yeah. Right. 
So. Can you hear my dog barking in the Yes. Bathroom? Yay. That's my security. That's my security alarm right oh, there. Oh, <laughs> let him come say hi. <laughs> no, he's barking because my husband just came in the door. He just heard something. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So we're coming up on about a half hour now. Okay. And okay. I have a couple of questions that are kind of sim very similar. Okay. Um, I want to, if I want, if I did want to do this and I want to become a super host, how would I want to make my Airbnb stand out among the rest? And um, what's the number one thing that you think someone should do before and during and after the stay to get the higher ratings as well, to provide the best experience? Okay. So in order to answer the question of how do you make yours stand out? This is, this is, I understand the class, which is everybody listening, right? Or everybody inside the course. The biggest concept thing I need you to understand is in that question, you are just highlighting your experience, which is your stay. That's new thinking for you, right? You're thinking I'm looking at my house or my apartment or my lake cabin or my, you are looking at yours to go, how do I make this experience stand out the best for the general public that might be interested in coming to try this? That's such different thought for everybody in general public. This is what I mean by that. If I'm an Airbnb traveler, I'm deciding, gosh, I've never had a lower level finished, which is no big deal to me in Wisconsin. My children have had that all growing up. We had the cousins sleep over and all the kids and whatever. But I'm coming from California and I've never been able to do that before. And so you might think your lower level, which is mine with fireplace, walkout, big screen, wet bar, guest suite, duh, is not a big deal because it's the smallest house we've owned, actually. Um, but to somebody else, they go, oh, my gosh, we're coming from California and like all this space is unbelievable. Right. And so what you're doing is taking that mindset and it doesn't have to be big. So here's another one. I'll come back to answering the question, but I want you to understand the concept of this. I have a friend in Wisconsin, very good friend of mine, and she and her husband have a yurt that they Airbnb. I want to demonstrate this concept. So you think you need to have a fancy house or whatever, and we got the whole swing. And I actually, Airbnbs are boats now, so stay with me. This yurt, you'd think... Hey, I've never been in a yurt before. I might as well, instead of doing a hotel room, I'm going to try this yurt thing in the summer in Wisconsin, right? Yeah, you can. But guess what I did? Because I was like, well, if I'm going to do it, like, what if I just want a totally different experience? And honestly, it was my number nine stay of a guest booking my house when I didn't mean to. And I had nowhere to go. And so I booked my friend's yurt in the middle of winter <laughs> so that I could get my ninth guest towards my super host. And you might say to me, well, sure, you spent money, so that doesn't make sense. It's like, listen, the bigger game was getting to Superhost, right? So, yep, I did. I took my mom, who was 70, to the winter yurt. We, I mean, like, you're in al fresco, people. It is cold. You have a wood-burning stove that has to stay on all night. But we had never done it before. And I got matching pajamas, and we went out to the outhouse in the middle of winter. Like, I don't normally do that. And so... How you make yours stand out is for it being what it is. That's that's it. So some people are wanting, when I first started mine, the number one thing I marketed mine on was relaxing, just peaceful and relaxing because it was just um, whites and grays and simple. So I'm not like a whole bunch of stuff and details. Ours is just clean and simple and nice and the necessities are there. So for a lot of people in their hectic life with all their junk in their normal house or whatever, it was, gosh, this is so nice. We could come in here and we didn't feel out of place. So what you're going to do is look at yours and I will do some consulting, right? We'll do that in a different package outside the course, but and I could do it anywhere in the world on Zoom. You're going to look at your property and you're going to talk to even other people and go, what do you think is the best you know, about this situation? And, and let it be that. It doesn't need to be fancy, okay? So that's the part I would say to you is mm -hmm. um, some people would love the opportunity because they've never done it before of, gosh, we could sleep in hammocks out in the yard because there's 10 acres. There's a house and that's what you're renting. But like you also can, if you want to, go onto the stars and sleep in a hammock. Your photos would highlight that, right? Mm -hmm. Or you are looking at what are the things that we do in addition that are a little bit different than other hosts are doing. And so what you do is go on Airbnb. They get traffic of the millions every day. 
And you're going to look at listings in your area and what does it say or what are they offering and how am I going to do a better job than they did? That's mm -hmm. what I did. And I specifically focused on who are the super hosts in my area and what do they say on their listing? What are their photographs? What are the things they're offering? And you make yours better. Mm -hmm. You talk about yours better. So it doesn't even have to be like, you know, the amenities are so it's, you're going to talk about it better and different. You need to remember, though, in your ratings, you want to make sure your guests can say they got what you advertised, right? So I don't want to tell you it's the Taj Mahal if it's a fallen down tin shed, right? <laughs> yeah, just being realistic. And the photos yeah. and the videos are the are important part of that. Yeah. Um, so they can they want to, they want to see that. Okay. Well, thank you. And then let's see. Uh, what's the last question here? I don't see any comments in the chat. I've been watching the chat to see. So if anybody was thinking about doing a comment. I was going to say, chat, I can see them. Um, so it's probably on my end. Hey, Gabrielle. So Gabrielle's the oh. gentleman. I always pop him out. I probably see it on my side, Faith. Sorry. Oh, sorry. So I Gabrie thought I could see it on no my worries. side, too. <laughs> Gabrielle Lil is actually the, the man years ago who taught me to live stream. And I was so scared to do it. And my first one was with my daughter. And then, like, look at me take off. So, Gab, thanks for showing up. I appreciate that. Um, I know he's working on all different kinds of uh, business pieces, but wonderful to see you, buddy. And um, I'll just check if there's. Oh, so Charlene is this is an important one. So Charlene is saying um, hi, ladies. So first of all, to Faith and I, we love it. Let me say one thing, Charlene, because I really want to encourage you. In 2020, the largest growing category of Airbnb hosts was single women. And they earned $70 billion on Airbnb. It's because we learned how to host, right? And we learned the details and how to do it well and make it simple, make it easy, right? And so then Charlene is saying, I didn't know about the permits. And so I'm a teacher. I'm a master's level teacher, actually. I'm a licensed broker, as I said. For me, it's important to me, and this is what everybody misses in these Airbnb courses where just Mr. So-and-so or ladies teaching you how to do stuff. You want to make sure you're doing it legal so that you don't get any kind of issues. It can be incredibly simple to get going. Um, but we just, again, want to make sure we do a good job because we don't want our neighbors upset. We don't want people um, reporting us right. Most importantly, we want our guests to have a good experience. So if your neighbors are all disgruntled, it doesn't go well. Um, I guess we skipped that a little bit, Faith, so I'll say that part. And that is, do you tell your neighbors? Technically and legally, unless there's something in your deed restrictions that you have to tell a neighbor something, you don't have to. Now, when I started, I did not tell my neighbors. I did not tell my neighbors. And I thought, <laughs> first of all, there's a lot of different people that rent, right? And I'm, I know they're going to eventually start saying, what are all these men coming to your house for, Sherry, right? Well, I wasn't home, so it's okay. I didn't at first because I was nervous about how this was going to go and how my neighbors were going to react. So what I wanted to do was to get my feet wet first, figure out how to do a really good job with my guests, right? And then eventually what I chose to do was start letting my neighbors know as I was having a little bit more Airbnb time. I am at a spot right now. I could not love my neighbors more. They are phenomenal with me and they actually enjoy it, if you can imagine this. So particularly my neighbor next to me and my neighbors across the street from me. They actually love all the different kind of guests I come. They think it's fun. They love it when the PGA is there, right? Because the guys are like, hey, hey, blah, blah, blah. Um, but we have gotten to a place where I actually choose to let them know. So-and-so is coming into our community. I'd like to introduce them. My guests, I do introduce. Um, we have, it's not always children, right? But lots of children come and stay. And so then I introduce to the kids. I'm the child whisperer in my neighborhood, if you haven't heard that once my kids went to college. And so I make sure if there's children coming that they're introduced to the kids in the neighborhood and how long they'll be there and all that kind of stuff. So I take it seriously on wanting to do a really good job, wanting to do it legal. It's an incredible opportunity for me because it's become an unbelievable stream for us. We're going to get going in Florida also. And then we're at this really neat spot of being able to go back and forth as a family. Uh, I still, you know, getting all three of those kids through college and like, and I'm a single mom guys. So like, that's why I also demonstrate not that you have to be any of those things, but it's possible, you know? That's awesome. That is such yeah. a success story. Thanks. So, okay. So 
What was the last question I wanted to ask you? Oh, all right. So the course opens, what's today? Thursday, the 11th. So the Saturday. Course, yeah, right? going to be available this Saturday. People can um, check it out if they want. And pass the course. If someone goes through that, um, how else do you like to offer help? How can they reach out to you? What else do you want to do? Yeah. So there's there's a couple things that will be in the course. Um, there will certainly be a link right to Airbnb. So you can come in as a referral under me um, into Airbnb. You do not have to, but there's a link inside the course um, that will personally invite you as my guest to become a host. Um, I am a real estate broker, right? And so I can physically help people myself in Wisconsin and Florida. Um, I can also refer other places. So there's some people who have already contacted me and said, we want to buy property or we want to get doing this with you in buying something in Florida or Wisconsin or whatever. I'm able to do that. I am also, the only, so I'll do a lot of this give into the course, right? But then the consulting where I'm actually going to work with you on your particular Airbnb, where I will consult, I'll look at your property, I'll help you with questions, I'll help you get going. Um, it's a consulting fee and it's a little pricey, but it's because I'm decent and I know we'll be able to get you going, right? Um, and then outside of that, it is also even if you need a referral somewhere else um, that you want to get your Airbnb going. Airbnb is all over the world, guys. So I can help you even when you're in another country. That's what people don't understand. So this course, you can still, you'll have to check your municipalities. But other than that, it doesn't need to be local. It doesn't need to be United States for this course to help you get going. So it can be anywhere Airbnb, Airbnbs. You know, there might be a little bit of nuance, but I'm teaching you how to get going, how to get on, how to be a super host. And then you're going to run a business that's actually, you know, pretty simple and very low entry and cost, which I think is amazing. So, yeah. And who better to learn from than someone who's already done it? You know, well, you I wanted to someone who's actually practicing what they preach. Right. Thank you. And people can, <laughs> you know, publicly go look at my reviews. So my oh, reviews yeah. are out there. So if you're questioning, like. You know, yeah, she's telling us this, which a lot of hosts do of like, oh, I'm the best. Yeah, well, go go check my public ratings. My kids have. Yeah. So my oldest daughter and her boyfriend made me laugh so hard. They're like, we checked out your reviews last night. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. So anybody can mm -hmm. look at them. Um, but that's the way to see. Does somebody really know what they're doing? And again, I wanted to do it from the perspective of I don't have 100. I was that little mom sweating and getting going myself and learning it. And I wanted to be able to be at a point where I was successfully doing it, but still a, a newbie into, OK, I got one. Now I'm going to get my second. You know, like I'm not I'm not this big corp that's doing all this stuff. It reminds me of one more thing. You don't you can do this even with corporate rentals. So I started out with a general public. The, the whole lifestyle has changed so much from I didn't want to rent a hotel room anymore is where we were 10 years ago. Right. And the general public knows that where they go. Yeah, I hear people Airbnb because they don't really want a hotel. They want more than a hotel, you know, because they're renting two rooms. It was uncomfortable. That was really 10 years ago. Then we got into I like to Airbnb because it's a little bit more space. It's a little more flexible. Maybe now since COVID, we are absolutely into the safety part of traveling for germs, right? Of like, I don't want to be with a whole bunch of people in a hotel, but we are way past that. We are at, people can work anywhere and people can work anywhere longer terms. So I don't just do the short-term rentals. I book people for three months at a time, four months at a time, and it works out perfect. I have one opening right now, which I almost never do. And I would really prefer a January to April for 2022 for our house. So if anybody has a guest, wants a guest, please let me know. Um, but we have that flexibility and I've gone into corporate rentals. So here's what the general public doesn't know. Corporates have understood. I want a work group working together. And we, instead of owning a building, hello, are putting our people places, not just the PGA work moves all over. Right. So they work with me in Wisconsin, in Florida. I'm sending them over to Hilton Head um, in uh, South Carolina. But you have people who are going, we have a work group of four people coming in for a conference. So instead of sticking them in a hotel, they're going, all right, they're all going into this home because guess what happens? I have a lower level work area, not that you have to. You have the flexible kitchen for the camaraderie. I have been rented for corporate events where they just want my house for two hours. They'll pay the rate and they just want to come have a team building meeting and they want to cook out and they want to what? All right. 
you can have my place for full price for two hours because they sent me a private message and said, would you consider this over your regular listings? So I want to mostly open people's eyes just about what they thought it was, or maybe it interests them. And I know you and I would agree, Faith. The last thing you and I are trying to do is talk everybody into it. All we want to do is go, gosh, who knew? I didn't know before. And like, this exactly. is a pretty cool thing. Yeah. Right. It's amazing. It's a wonderful opportunity for people yeah. who are ready to do it and yeah. just want more info and want to learn from someone who's a really great teacher. Well, thank you. And um, yeah, you're the teacher. So, well, all right. Um, are there any more questions? Can you see on your side if there's more? Um, let me just check questions? one time and I have to laugh. I go put my old school glasses on, you know. <laughs> and I so apologize about my lighting. It's got great lighting. Oh, <laughs> Dieter is in here. So Dieter is a very personal, good friend of mine. Um, he is actually with me in South Central or Southwest Florida, sorry. And he's an investor um, and international as well. And so uh, it's wonderful you showed up. I appreciate you. Um, he's a good friend and a future business partner with me. And he and I have lots of different things. We're interested in all of this. Um, I don't want to share his details. So he's got something coming up that I'll call NDA. So non-disclosure agreement that he's doing in this space that is phenomenal on this course and all this stuff for him. So thank you for showing up, Dieter. I appreciate it. And I'm going to see him later today. So thank you so much. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, if you don't have any more, uh, maybe we'll wrap it up here. Yep. Everybody can access the course as of Saturday, November 13th. How can um, they do that and where can they do that, Faith? Well, we will put out the links. We will post the link okay. to get to um, a dedicated page where they can get okay. access if they want. Okay. And also your email. If people want to access you outside of LinkedIn, what's the best email for them to reach you? So my best email is Sherry. So S-H-E-R-I at story, S-T-O-R-Y, Lane, L-A-N-E, properties.com. So storylaneproperties.com. Awesome. Well, this was fun. I'm really excited Thank about you. this. Thank you for letting me participate in it too. with you. It's and the course cool. will always stay up after Saturday, right? So people can even- Oh yeah, it just opens people can on do Saturday. It. Yep, it opens Saturday. So even yeah. a year later, they can come check yeah. it out. It'll be available. Awesome. But Thank you so much. This is the time, right? This is the time to think this about it This is such an amazing opportunity. We have never had such a cool opportunity for multiple streams of income that can yeah. be relatively passive. It's exciting. Yeah. And I want to just thank everybody for showing up. I love the recordings, right? As a master's teacher, I love that because you can come back anytime mm -hmm. and come to class. Yeah. And so it's exciting. So thank you for showing up. Thanks for your interest. We look yeah. forward to Faith and I will get our joy. When people are able to use this, it works for them and they're doing well because that just feels like so exciting, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, very awesome. nice. Well, thank you, Sherry. And thanks yeah. to everybody who's watching and watching the replay. So have a great right. rest of the day. And Absolutely. I can't wait to hear the stories that come out after this. It's always exciting. Thank mm -hmm. you. All right, see you later.